beginning. In other words, before the beginning of the creation of a material world which would manifest the King of God on earth. In the eternal mind of God, the Alpha and Omega was expressed. And God said, let there be light. That eternal day still echoes throughout the universe and hidden deep in the hearts and minds of men. The quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit recalls that day. That memory of that eternal day, rejected by the minds of men, Block from hearing from the quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit will not approach that day out of fear of the distortions that many have given it, secular and religious. In that mind, this mind of Christ, in the same mind that was in. The Son of God manifested as the Son of Man with the mind of Christ expressing that eternal day and will of the Father. His call back to sonship of that which was lost to the first Son of God, Adam, who rejected that, ended up going with the soul's opinions and ideas of men and lost memory of their sonship, who he is, who we are, forming their own religious and secular ideas of a son of man, not that as a son of God. The son of God became a son of man to retrieve the lost sons of God and restore to memory that which was lost to the fall of Adam and Eve. This whole series is about that, along with the other series of videos which have slowly developed over the years in my coming to this matter of the eternal day and finding it rejected by the secular and the religious world. But that memory's there. And once it's discovered, you cannot forget it. Once the human spirit is awakened and cries, Abba, Father, realizing who its real father is, it desires and hungers and thirsts after that righteousness, that view and perspective that only the God the Father could ever give to you to a new mind the mind of Christ that's in you. He did that in hope that this fallen corn of mind would eventually and its limitations lead you back to that mind and your sonship and letting go the glory and recognition of sons of men. Accept that glory which he restores to Christ Christ in you the hope of glory. What you lose here can't be compared to what he's offering. I have a piece now I want to get into. It addresses this fact of our regressing. Let me read that piece and we'll go from there. The eternal day, this is part 13 of this series, the trap of regression. Here's the definition of that word regression. Go or to go back 
or to a lower level. In our moments of regression, we sink to a lower level. We can trap us in this present fallen condition. We were called to go on to the prize of God's highest calling, an eternal calling, hidden in our human spirit with the task of the Holy Spirit to work this out of us. A real sense, a good sense of this word regression, that instead of trapping us in this lower experience, rises us up to the lost memories that sadly many deny, hanging on to what Scripture calls the flesh, which constitutes memories of our race, culture, secular religious creeds, and opinions of gender, male, female, in which we were naturally born into. Said Scripture, one day, the eternal day, will be forgotten, never called to mind again, because the mind of Christ in our waking human spirit will rule our souls and bodies. Beyond what an evil seeks to mimic, misrepresent, there are memories locked up in our human spirit called in scriptures the mind of Christ, meaning more than our carnal ideas of this word Christ, but rather its true meaning to be an anointing an anointing of matters eternal. Scripture after scripture speaks of this anointing, which many times gets caught up in some religious idea or experience, which sadly falls short, and that it only is a soulish movement of human emotions and limited memories. Many times some private interpretation of human history secular or religious in nature, that blocks any true feeling and thoughts that are imprisoned, that are imprisoned in our human spirit. Paul the Apostle sought to express those rare moments that our spirit seeks to express, calling it glimpses of glory, or the sighing of our spirit's longing for a lost existence expressed many times in fictional stories of a lost paradise. These fictional stories, once again, sadly, dismiss the moment as just wishful thinking, something unreal, getting labeled fiction or occultic. Doing this, it cancels out what Scripture reveals to be the true source of the materially created world and has humanity instead Worshipping the creation more than the creator. You hear this in the following verse of scriptures. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith, which is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And that word still in the mind of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will endure. It's the eternal word, and still echoes through all eternity. His original intent and purpose, before the fall of Adam. For this word, framed this world, and its creation for its purpose. So that things which are seen were not made, of things which do appear. In other words, the world was not self-created. It didn't create itself, nor does it sustain itself, apart from an unseen source. If anything, this creation, being cut off from its true source, its originator, and this originator being a supreme, personified intelligence, this creation being cut off from its original originator will be observed to be winding down to one day die of what is called heat death. 
feeding off its own depleting energies until it all hangs in dead space, still there, yet lifeless. This Creator said to be its life, its sustainer, and to Him all things hold together and consist. This text used the word framed is a natural illustration to address God's ability to hold all things together, sustain it in His framing, like a picture in a frame which holds the viewer's view to the real beauty of the picture. Poorly framed, like with evolution, takes away its beauty and the painter's true expression. As we observe this planet, and in many universes which this planet sits in. This is a scientific fact which cannot be denied. Instead of evolving in an upward spiral, it is a downward spiral. With the frame removed by the fallen minds of men, ever seeking to reverse this in their own hope of a new creation, thinking to reframe it. Well, what they are seeking to do has already been done and is what the originator of this creation is now offering to correct a fall from what God had originally intended, a world, a universe without end. This will one day end this one. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 to 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. What's shared of this matter of creation can and does apply to matters of attempting to create peace, liberty, and a sense of unity that is said to be held, preserved in the eternal frame of the kingdom of God, untouched of the fallen minds of humanity, seen as a safe haven of the eternal hope that will never fade as hope in the seen world. This natural world does. The original frame and picture is preserved. We only live in a poor, distorted copy of that which is held, preserved, before the foundations of this world. Ephesians 4.1 I beg of you, please, therefore, I, the prisoner in Christ, order your behavior in a manner worthy of divine summons with which you were called, with every loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, bearing one with one another in love, doing your best to safeguard the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one spirit, even as also you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one placing into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, one God and Father of all the one above all, and through all, and in all. He's given us that hope. Though he subjected his world to death and decay and dying, he did that in hope, and in that hope he placed in you the seed that's hidden in the husk of a grain of wheat, unless it falls and the ground dies, you end up alone. Cut off from God forever. Let the mind of Christ reign in your life. Let the Holy Spirit break away this husk of race, culture, and secular religious creeds and opinions of male and female and get you to see why these divisions were there and the hope that you might grope after Him and find Him in this lost memory who he is and who you are, and scream for the first time in your life, Abba, Father. Look to him. 
any idea created by the four minds of man cannot compare to that which is and always has been established in that eternal kingdom of God, which our Father has desired to be manifested on earth as it was in heaven. So as I have revealed, back by the letter of God's written word and the spirit of unity, confirmed by God our Father through God the Son, eternally powered by the God the Holy Spirit, which has been revealed and in the only true use of the word regression, not our regressing into a, our fallen past history of humanity, which we're commanded to forget and press on to this higher calling. This is the goal and true mind of Christ Jesus, the apostles and prophets, those called out to this mind, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, now said to be all and in all, waiting to be awakened beyond this adamic sleep we have all fallen into. Jude chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called Mercy unto you, peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all doings to write unto you of the common salvation, common salvation for all, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude saw it. Jude understood it, and he saw it through the mind of Christ that was in him. Paul saw it. All the apostles eventually saw it. And down through human history, some of our so-called forefathers saw it. And they were rejected. And people ended up going right back to the old ways. And you see it today. The mind of Christ would solve this. There would be a unity in the bond of peace that would pass all this understanding and misunderstanding. And we would all be of the same mind. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one mind. One Father of us all. You reject this, that's the only time that you would lose what we call our salvation. But once you gain it, you cannot lose it. Once you are in Christ, there is no more condemnation to those there. In Christ! Neither height, nor death, nor principalities, or things of past, or nothing in the future, nothing can separate you from the love of God. And what He placed in you, the hope of glory, Christ in you, and you're quickened your spirit by the Holy Spirit. That's the message. That's the true gospel of what He accomplished beyond some religious idea or the rejection of the secular world. This is the message of the eternal day and the calling of our to remember that day. Behold, now is accepted the time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, an eternal day and a recalling to a lost memory of our sonship. God bless you.